worship. The term Trinity is a word that we Christians use to describe our God. However, a description is not an explanation. No human mind can comprehend the mystery of God, who reveals himself as one God, yet three persons. As we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we do not gather with the dream that we might somehow unveil that mystery. Rather, we gather in the spirit of Pentecost, marveling at the privilege that God has given us in revealing the truth we could never otherwise know. We begin with our first hymn, 237, verses 1 through 3, All Glory Be to God on High. Thank mm -hmm. you. Have mercy upon us, 
and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he giveth the power to become the sons of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. In our first lesson, through this dramatic appearance of the Lord, allowing Isaiah to experience more vividly the awesome glory of the Almighty God, now with every trace of self-righteousness destroyed, Isaiah was truly ready to appreciate the purifying power of God's promised Messiah. This stunning display of grace and glory inspired Isaiah's heart to embrace and his lips to proclaim the genuine motive of God's servant. Here I am, send me. Our first lesson is from the Old Testament reading of Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. The temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Here endeth our first reading. In the epistle lesson, we are called by our spirit-generated faith into an intimate relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. We can call him Abba, or Father, and as he has made us his heirs. So as children of God, we can ask for whatever we need or want and have confidence that he will answer us. The Epistle Lesson for Trinity Sunday is recorded in the 8th chapter of Romans, reading verses 14 through 17. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit, that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. Here endeth our epistle, and we join in singing the confession of our faith in the words of hymn 252, We All Believe in One True God.
In the words of the Gospel lesson, we are given the third testimony concerning Jesus. It was a sign that Jesus was the true Messiah, as the Old Testament had foretold. The Messiah would suddenly come to the temple, and he would rise as holy above the sanctuary, and also give us the con this also gives us the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, a man who represented the best of the Jewish leaders. The Holy Gospel is written in the third chapter of St. John, reading verses 1 through 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked? You are, a, you are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak what we know, and... We testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up and everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Here endeth the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we use the Athanasian Creed for our confession, and note as we say the creed, the word Catholic is used. This has nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church, but it is from the Latin translation, meaning universal or Christian, and shows the oneness and completeness of our faith and of the Church. And we begin. Whoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he holds the Catholic faith, which faith accepts everyone to do, keep, to do, keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlasting. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the person nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one, the glory equal, and the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. As also there are not three incomprehensibles, nor three uncreated, but one uncreated and one incomprehensible. So likewise, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty, 
And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And that there are not three gods, but one God. So likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet not three lords, but one Lord. For as we are compelled by the Christian virtue to acknowledge each person by himself, to be both God and Lord, so we are also forbidden by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made nor created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is of the Father, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in the Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But all three persons are co-equal together and co-eternal, so that in all things, as is foresaid, the unity in the Trinity and the Trinity in unity is to be worshipped. He, therefore, that will be saved must think thus of the Trinity. Furthermore, it is necessary to everlasting salvation that he also believe rightly the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man, God of the substance of the Father, begotten before the worlds, and man of the substance of his mother, born in the world, perfect God and perfect man, of a rational soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead, and inferior to the Father as touching his manhood, who, although he is God and man, yet he is not two, but one Christ, one not by conversion of the Godhead into flesh, but by taking of the manhood into God, one altogether, not by confession, confusion of substance, but by unity of persons. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, he ascended into heaven, is dead. He seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. At his coming, all men will rise again with their bodies and shall give an account of their own works. And they that have done good shall go to life everlasting, and they that have done evil into everlasting fire. This is the Catholic faith, which except a man believe faithfully, he cannot be saved. Amen. We now join in our sermon hymn, hymn number 243, verses 1 and 3, Oh, that I had a thousand voices.
who sent us your Holy Spirit, who has given us true faith in Jesus Christ, we pray that you would guard and keep us from everything that would threaten that faith. Work in us the desire to read and study our Bibles in order to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. And by the Holy Spirit, keep us ever faithful to your word so that with our voices confessing the Trinity, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The words of our text are a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, a man who represents the best of the Jewish leaders. Jesus' testimony begins with the use with the need for repentance and then an explanation of his mission. God became man to win salvation for all, and the only way to salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. Our text is written then in the third chapter of John, reading again verses 1 through 3. We read as follows in Jesus' name. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with you. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. O Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Nicodemus comes to Christ at night, fearful of his colleagues and fellow rulers of the Jewish people. There was increasingly hostility against Jesus that would soon exclude people if they confessed that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ, the promised Messiah. Already Nicodemus knew that his visit to Christ would be frowned upon, but behind his conscious fears, Nicodemus did not understand the faith of which he was supposed to be a teacher for Israel. His sinful nature kept him blind from the truths of God that Christ had been teaching openly to the people. In our gospel lesson, the work, of, the work of the Trinity is clearly defined by Christ. In this conversation with Nicodemus, we see how the triune God has provided for our salvation, which is our theme. Dear fellow redeemed, so Nicodemus comes as a man giving approval to Christ. As he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Here we see the word we on his lips. He means he but not the other ruling Jews, but rather the many who were following Jesus at that time. In his statement, he assumes that the religious leaders actually were the authorities. It assumes that they were wise on Holy Scripture. Of course, they gave every appearance of biblical wisdom and uprightness who were qualified then to approve Christ. Of course, Christ, the Son of God, never needs approval from men and tells Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. So Jesus here disregards Nicodemus' compliment about being a teacher from God and tells him about the need for repentance. A person needs to be born again. We can almost hear the thoughts of Nicodemus. Who does this Christ think he's talking to? I'm not one of those awful sinners like the prostitutes or tax collectors. Why would I need to be born again? Of course, Nicodemus does not say these thoughts out loud. Perhaps his conscious mind 
cannot even grasp what Christ is saying to Nicodemus, that he is not fit for the kingdom. He who thinks of himself as good and wise is actually a foolish sinner. His life so far was nothing. He had to start over from a good beginning, a new birth, or he could never be anything good or pleasing in God's sight. What room does Christ leave here then for the pride, for pride? The esteemed opinion of the Jews for him is nothing. The efforts of the Pharisees to keep the law are nothing. The piety of the lawyers and the scribes is nothing. There was all a mountain of nothingness of those who thought they were the pinnacle of something great. But Christ says it amounts to a whole bunch of men who need to start over again with a new birth born from above. So we see Nicodemus struggle with this and asks, how can a man be born when he is old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born. How can a man be physically born again? His blind foolishness misunderstands or perhaps he simply sp stutters out a response since he cannot speak the real issue, which is man's total worthlessness before a holy and righteous God, Christ says to Nicodemus, Give up your old life, Nicodemus. Wise in his own eyes, he completely fails to grasp what Christ says, thus showing that he has no authority of anything. Brothers and sisters, isn't it a good thing that we are wise, unlike Nicodemus? Well, not really. We also had to experience a new birth. Our lives up until the time of our baptism were just as foolish and sinful. Even now, any knowledge that we have is from God and not of our own understanding. We all were at one time sinful little babies who by God's grace now hold the mysteries of God, the sacraments, and the word which God's divine plan of salvation from before the foundation of the world. We still, like little babies, do not really understand except for the bare surface these mysteries are beyond us, these blessings are beyond us, and the new birth is now that we now possess is all by itself mysterious. To be born of water and the Spirit, right, says our old man sarcastically. Meanwhile, millions stumble at the doctrine of holy baptism saying things like, what is baptism? How can water do such great things? So many Nicodemuses cannot comprehend the new birth of the Spirit. For it is only by God's grace do we confess the truth, as it tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We confess one holy baptism for the remission of our sins, the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, because it is through the means of grace that the Holy Spirit cleanses us from sin, gives us a new life in Christ, and we become children of God. We have received the blessings of baptism, which are forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. But let us not pretend that we are masters of this teaching, as if we 
our wise teachers like Nicodemus thought he was. We can quickly see how pride has no place for a Christian. And we should never think that we are something better than others and exalt ourselves over others. In Christ alone are we lifted up. So we should always lay ourselves low in humble repentance, cast out our prideful old man's boasting. For as Galatians 3.26 says, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And here's another mystery to offend the pride of our flesh, a serpent hung up on a pole. The Old Testament story is one thing, the miracle that our outpour, our proud flesh might believe and understand, but then Christ reveals that he will be as the serpent. By looking to Christ, the new bronze serpent, we are saved from the venoms of sin and death and hell. There is offense there. Since we wonder why the Holy Son of God would identify himself with a snake. But ever since Eden, the serpent has stood for evil. How can Christ take the place occupied by wickedness? But that's what he came to do. Not that Christ was at all wicked and sinful, of course not. But he took all our sins and all our evil upon his flesh. He suffered for you and me and for all men so thoroughly and comprehensively that he became sin for us. Every sin ever committed was there on Golgotha, on the man who hung dying on the cross. What an offense, yet what a mystery. This is the salvation of man at which many men stumble. Who would believe something so ugly as a cross would be the purchasing of forgiveness? Who could see that this sprinkling of that blood is the propitiation to satisfy the wrath of God for man's sins. But that is precisely what it is. We cannot fully understand. Even now, our old man wants to reject and disbelieve. But by God's grace, he will keep us in this faith against our fleshly thinking. For in baptism, we are born of the Spirit, born of water and of the Word, born again from above. And because the triune God has provided for our salvation, we should make every effort to bring our children to this blessed sacrament soon after their birth. So to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, be the glory. Amen. <clears throat> and now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. And we join in our general prayer. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. O most holy Trinity, we thank you for the creation, the continual preservation and direction of heaven and earth, angels and men and all things. We bless you for revealing yourself by your holy words to the children of men as one eternal God in three persons, co-equal in majesty, power, and glory and for establishing a church for all generations upon the foundation of the gospel. We worship you in true faith, and by our adoration and confession, separate ourselves from all who do not acknowledge you as the only true and living God. God, the Father everlasting, from eternity you gave your Son and have ordained him 
to be mediator and redeemer of all men. He did accomplish and make known to us through the wonderful counsel of our salvation. We humbly beseech you to have mercy upon us and to forgive us all our sins. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us and we shall be healed. May it please you, moreover, to gather a holy Christian church from all nations and tongues and to preserve also among us a holy people, that your name may be worshipped and glorified unto the ends of the earth. We commend to thy merciful providence all those in authority and pray thee to enable them to rule and govern, that they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. And as we can do nothing without you, grant us grace that we may always, in singleness of heart, do those things that please you through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the everlasting Son, who art the expression image of the Heavenly Father and the brightness of your glory, who of thy unspeakable love didst in the fullness of time assume our nature and make atonement for all our sins, we praise and glorify thee and humbly acknowledge our inability ever worthily to thank thee for all thy goodness. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, and with thy most precious blood cleanse us from all sin. Preserve us into thy, with thy holy word and blessed sacraments. Defend us from error and false doctrine. Bring to naught the devices of the enemy of, this, of thy word, that they may have no power over us, to mislead us into paths of sin and destruction. Protect the whole Christian church on earth, Give to us and all its members faith, patience, comfort in all trials and distresses, and conduct us safely through the veil of sorrow into the kingdom of eternal glory. God the Holy Ghost, who art sent from the Father and the Son into our hearts to renew them, continually enlighten us and ever kindle the truth of thy saving faith in us. Direct and lead us ever more into thy truth and keep us steadfast amidst all the assaults of the temptation of the world, even unto the end. These and whatsoever other things thou would have us ask of thee, O God, grant unto us in the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing hymn 245, verses 1 through 3, God loved the world so that he gave.
grace alone we are called into your kingdom to confess the true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty, to worship the true unity. We beseech you that you would keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one true God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn 244, verses 1 through 3.